I know what you're probably thinking. It seems absurd to go to the other side of the planet in pursuit of an animal you've only daydreamed about since you were a child. However, despite two years of planning and preparation, a pandemic that closed down New Zealand three days before we were leaving for this hunt in 2020, and three years of lockdown, only seemed to drag this dream on forever. However, in 2023, the stars aligned in the pursuit of chasing giant red stags during the most intense rut, or as the Kiwis like to call it, the roar, that I've ever experienced was well worth the wait. I look at these international hunts as once in a lifetime challenges. That's mainly due to the fact that they require so much planning, dedication, and commitment. So I tend to try to invest time honing my skill as a hunter so when I get there, the little things won't take me out of the game. What was it, 7,000? 500 miles later, here we are, down in New Zealand. Thank God it's only two time zone changes from Alaska, because we went almost directly south. But uh, we made the journey happen, we're down here now. We've already seen quite a few tar today. Got a stock in on one, got in about 25 yards, and uh, he busted us out and blew out. But uh, so far, so good. Beautiful country. Yeah, what's it remind? It kind of reminds me of areas of the Brooks Range. Doesn't this kind of like stuff yeah. out here look a yeah. lot like the Brooks Range? It is worth mentioning though on that tar that the guy wearing Kuyu saw him. No, no, no. The guy wearing Kuyu was seen by the tar. Well, <laughs> he was looking at you. 25 yards. <laughs> he had to be blind if he didn't see. Him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we know where some of those are too. Yes, we really. do. <laughs> uh, Anyways, we're having a good time so Yes, far. we are. We're coming in. Marcel found a nice bowl. Tar. And uh, we're just coming around to try to get inside of the room.
If you're gonna fall, fall right now so I can get on film. Our famous last words on the back of this ranger. Going up the side of the mountain. That doesn't seem sketchy at all. <laughs> Wait, you haven't fallen on it yet, Lando? See this, but that white speck way up there is an albino tar. They're albino, they're just white. They're just all white? Yeah. Well, he's a horrible friend to have because he shows everybody where you're at. So we're on day two now and we spent the morning um, out glassing and looking for tar. But you can probably see it's a little bit nasty out today. It went from raining to sleeting to hailing to snowing and then now it's back to raining again. And I think the tar have kind of ducked into the brush or whatever and gotten shelter so we're just sitting here now uh, we found this hut that's pretty cool got a little fire going inside and we're just gonna spend you know the next couple hours uh hoping that the weather breaks and Welcome home, Steve. oh hello sir what's this oh just a little coffee did you bring that <laughs> yes i did you know i knew those gray wisdom hairs in your beard meant something good yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm, uh, I just want to, I just want to, he comes up to me like, I just want to give you something so you can spoil yourself getting 24 hours. You want to take a look at this while we're here. So these, what do we got, Landon? Yeah. Oh, look at one this. this. Here is some, uh, Thank you, Dave Ryan, for our rations. Because it's, it's, really, it's like, uh, it makes me feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> We had to duck into this hut because it was pissing rain on us, and uh, now we're in, cup of coffee we're in full survival mode, as you can tell. Here's some instant veggie soup. Yeah. Sports drink. <laughs> I remember my first time Coffee pouring. Drink. <laughs> Just because I can't feel my hands <laughs> anymore <laughs> after riding in the back. <laughs>
did. <laughs> Tar with a bow. <laughs> Smoked it. Smoked it, amigo. It didn't even go five yards. <laughs> that was sweet. Dude, that thing launched like a rabbit. <laughs> If I'm if I'm inside of ten yards, I should be fine. Okay, take them when you're ready. In the shoulder. No, they're like way better. I don't know. All right, here we go. Polex them, dog. He's down. I just couldn't yep. drop. Dead. That's about as good as it gets. After our success on the South Island chasing tar, it was now time to go to the North Island and continue our hunt in pursuit of big stags, our power sheep, and anything else we might be able to get opportunity on. Bye.
goes. Like, <laughs> still steaming, dude. That's pretty cool looking. That is cool looking. Look at those tips. Congratulations, still bubbly. Dude, look at that. That's so cool looking. You guys watch me just pile up. Oh. The boys were nice enough to let me shoot the first stag, so it was back to the lodge for some refreshments and time to just relax and hang out before going back out to start an evening hunt. Some things you just have to see in foreign countries to make you appreciate them. Oh, there we go. Landon was able to get it done earlier this morning. And now uh, it's just kind of pouring rain, so we're uh, low keying it for a little bit. <laughs> Once the rain cleared out and we had clear skies in the forecast for the next few days, it was time to get back in the game. Once we got Landon's sheep packed out, we figured we'd stick around and watch the gut pile. We knew there was pigs in the area and it doesn't take long for them to cut that scent and show up at the kill site.
Shortly after Landon arrowed this pig, we saw an opportunity to make a move on some wild goats. Didn't take long for us to grab our gear and get moving. With only three days left on the hunt, it was time to make a move on this stag we'd been watching for a few days. He hadn't been going too far, but we knew he was somewhat in the area, so we decided to sit him out until he started calling before we made our move. Pig's got some sweet tines on it. Holy cow. Wow. wow. Beautiful. I That's passed up on that one last night, which was a stud. Yeah. Twice, in hopes that I could get this guy. Only to find this one waiting for you.
The action came quick, and Jonathan knew that this was the stag he wanted to take. All we had to do was get into a good position and take a nice ethical shot. Dude, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, man. This guy is ancient. So, pretty good day today. Boys all tagged out. We're all done with uh, red stag hunting. However, we still have fallow deer to chase, our pow sheep, turkey, all kinds of fun stuff. But when we're all done hunting for today anyways, we are going to enjoy life a little bit to find things. Now that everyone was tagged out on both tar and red stags, we decided that we'd take the last few days and chase some of the other species that New Zealand has to offer. Arapawa sheep were the next animal on the hit list. These animals were introduced to New Zealand in the late 18th century and quickly thrived. Since the introduction of this sheep, it has become free range and is a feral wild animal that people enjoy hunting in New Zealand. Are you recording this? No, I'm just listening to your story. Okay. And and admiring and I kind of I kind of hated him for it, you know? Like I I resent it. He's down. Good He's shot. down. Good shot. Jonathan. 
Jonathan. Turn around. Good eye, mate. Almost there. Cam Haynes wins. <laughs> As most hunters know, it's not always about taking an animal. It's about the experiences and the friendships that you make on hunts like this. Coming down here with two of my best friends and experiencing these kind of adventures was absolutely the icing on the cake. As reality started to set in and heading home was inevitable, I started to think about getting back to the daily grind. I knew that we had to take advantage of the last two days and see what else we could get into.